Good morning, everyone. We will be studying today from Genesis 29. Genesis chapter 29. We will begin in verse 21. So if you want to be finding your place there, <clears throat> and then we will also be over in the book of Psalm, but we'll start in Genesis 29. You will recall that Isaac and Rebecca have twins, Jacob and Esau. And there came about contention between them when Jacob deceived his father with the help of Rebekah and received the blessing that was supposed to go to Esau. And he then had to flee because Esau was planning to kill him. And so he flees and is separated from his family for many, many, many years. And he flees to his uncle Laban. And there, Jacob meets Rachel, whom is beautiful and he loves her from the get-go and makes a deal with Laban to serve for seven years and then to marry her. <clears throat> and so Laban seems to agree. And we're going to pick up here in Genesis 29, starting with verse 21. What I want us to think about today is <clears throat> unrealistic expectations in relationships. All of us would probably agree that as little girls and teenagers and then on up, we, we thought a specific way of how we would marry and how our spouses might treat us. And, and we come quickly to realize when we marry that that's oftentimes just not the way it goes, right? And we put up on our spouses or sometimes in friend relationships, um, this expectation of what they ought to do for us and how they ought to know us. And from a biblical standpoint, that's just not possible as human beings. That our spouses and our friends simply cannot fill this void that seems to always be within us because they're just not who God is and who can fully fill that void. Well, we're going to see today in this passage that there is a woman who deeply desires to be loved. And isn't that what we all want, right? We want to be loved on a level where we're fully known and fully loved and fully cared for. And ladies, I'm just here to tell you, there's not anyone on this earth that can do that for you or that can do that for me outside of God. They're not meant to. They don't have the capacity to do it. And so getting angry and getting depressed because we feel that someone does not love, le love us as we think they ought to simply is a problem with our thinking, not a problem with them. Because we're expecting them to do something that they simply are just not able to do. Let's pick up here in Genesis chapter 29, starting in verse 21. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife. Remember, he would have thought that this is going to be Rachel. Give me my wife, for my time is completed that I may go into her. Laban gathered the men of the place and made a feast. This would be the wedding feast. Um, weddings at, um, would have lasted a week. 
Now in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to him, and Jacob went in to her. Laban also gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a maid. So it came about in the morning that, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this you've done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? Now, we might question, how is it that Jacob could have gone in and had sexual relationship with Leah and not known that it was Leah and not Rachel? There, we don't know specifically from Scripture, but we can probably infer a couple of things. Number one, it was tradition that the bride would have been veiled. That's where we get the idea of wearing a veil during a wedding. That's not done as much anymore, but the whole idea of veil is that um, she would be covered. And also, it would have been at nighttime. The consummation of a marriage would have been done somewhat in private, but still this week-long celebration would have gone on. So the consummation of the marriage would have been the, on the first night, and it would have been dark. Also, unfortunately, um, during a wedding, there was lots of wine, right? And so it could have been that Jacob wasn't in full knowledge capacity, unfortunately. We don't know for sure. Um, but we know those three things, the veil, the darkness, and possibly too much celebration could have gone on. At any rate, we are told in Scripture he did not realize that this was Leah until the next morning. And obviously, he is upset. Verse 26 but Laban said, It is not the practice in our place to marry off the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also for the service which you shall serve with me for another seven years. So Laban says, Listen, we couldn't marry off. Rachel before we married off Leah because Leah's older and that's the tradition for us. You finish this celebration out, this week-long celebration, and we'll allow you to also marry Rachel, but you're going to serve me another seven years. Ah, verse 28. Jacob did so and completed her week, and he gave him his daughter Rachel as his wife. Laban also gave his maid Billah to his daughter Rachel as her maid. So Jacob went in to Rachel also, and indeed he loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban another seven years. Now the Lord saw that Leah was unloved. He realized that Leah wasn't being loved by Jacob in the way, obviously, that she would have really wanted, that she was sad and suffering. And God opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Verse 32, this is such a sad verse. Leah conceived and bore a son and named him Reuben, for she said, because the Lord has seen my affliction, surely now my husband will love me. Leah's deep desire was to be loved by her husband, and she thought, oh, if I have kids, right? If I have a baby, he'll love me now. Look at verse 33. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, because the Lord has heard that I am unloved, he has therefore given me this son also. So still, first child did not change that for Jacob. He still did not love Leah. So she has another one thinking, okay, this time. So she named him Simeon. She conceived again and bore a son and said, oh, now this time my husband will become attached to me. Third son, okay, this time he'll... He'll, he'll love me now. 
because I've borne him three sons. Therefore, his, he, he was named Levi, and she conceived again. So still, three sons, and still, there's not the relationship that Leah would have wanted. She conceived again and bore a son and said, This time, here's the shift. This time, I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she named him Judah. Then she stopped bearing. There's a shift in Leah's thinking for a time. Jacob's just not going to love her the way she really needs to be loved. No matter how many children she bears. And so the shift in the thinking here is this time, I will praise the Lord. There's a realization, at least at this point for Leah, that Jacob simply does not love her, is not going to love her. She is unloved. So she just praises the Lord, focuses on the Lord. Now, I would be remiss in not telling you that Leah does go back to obviously desiring her husband to love her because that's the, what is, uh, in our relationships, supposed to be. We are supposed to want to be loved by our spouses, obviously. And that's good, and that's right. And she does uh, bear children again. God opens her womb again later on. And she still does desire deeply to be loved by Jacob, and that never comes to fruition. But for this time being, she does switch her thinking, rightly so, to being loved by God, and she praises God, and her focus becomes on the Lord. And ladies, in the deep sense of right love, deep love, love that knows us and cares for us, that is supposed to be from God alone. Why? Because He is the only perfect love there can be. He's the only one that can know us with the depth and care for us in the way we ought to be cared for. If you'll go with me, please, to the book of Psalm. The book of Psalm, over in chapter 31, Psalm 31 Verse 7. Listen to this. I will rejoice and be glad in your loving kindness because you have seen my affliction. You have known the troubles of my soul. God knows the troubles even in the depths of our soul, even when we may not be able to communicate what we are feeling or what we're going through to anyone else, He knows it. He loves us. He sees us, right? Go over to Psalm chapter 42. Now, Psalm 42 is such a interesting chapter and there's there's this despair and this depression that's going on in the psalmist's heart listen to this passage as the deer pants for the water brooks my soul pants for you oh god my soul thirsts for god for the living god when Shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been food day and night while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? There is something going on in the psalmist's heart where he's just crying and depressed and everybody seems to be sneering. Well, where's your God now? My tears have been my food day and night while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? Verse 4, These things I remember and I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go along with the throng and lead them in the procession to the house of God with the voice of joy and thanksgiving and multitude-keeping festival. Why are you in despair, O my soul? 
The psalmist doesn't even seem to fully understand himself. Why am I sad? Why am I depressed? And why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence. Oh my God, my soul is in despair within me within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of the Jordan and the peaks of Hermon from the Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the sound of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have rolled over me. This psalmist is drowning, drowning in despair and depression. Look at verse 8. Here it is. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and his song will be with me in the night. Day or night, ladies, day or night, depression, despair, sadness, something within us that we may not even fully understand ourselves. He knows. And day and night, his loving kindness and his mercy cares for us, loves us. His song comes to us. There is no one on this earth that can love us and attend to us and care for us in the way that God can. And so we are not supposed to put unrealistic expectations on our spouses or our friends that they simply cannot meet. They're not intended to. We are to go to God in prayer. Go to Him, remember we talked about last time, in the meditation of His Word, clinging to Him, loving Him, and allowing His Holy Spirit to minister to us, caring for us, comforting us in the way that only He can. You depressed today? Are you saddened today? Run to Him. Let Him care for you in the way only He can and stop putting unrealistic expectations on human beings because they simply cannot meet your needs.